Today on Public Eye News, an update on a crash on US 41 and how the cold and snow is affecting the country. Later, I will have your weather and Max Stevens will have your sports. Hi, I'm Megan Tarcia and this is Public Eye News. For the first time in over 80 years, the annual Confidential Continent Cup at Pine Mountain was canceled. Although the event was canceled because of coronavirus restrictions, the new $3 million ski jump is being shown off in a different way. Visitors have the option to purchase a limited edition 2021 button, which will give access to future events. Nick Le Le Keck, Kiwanai Ski Club president, said no current upcoming events are finalized yet, but just like this weekend, as long as you have the limited edition button, you'll be able to climb the ski jump as well as explore the rest of the resort. And since the canceled Continent and Cup won't be bringing any money in, buttons will continue to help fundraise for lost revenue. Limited edition buttons will be available through the end of February. Although the beloved UP200 dog sled was canceled because of COVID restrictions this year, a piece of it can be found in Marquette. The UP200 start gate was placed in Marquette Commons in honor of the event that would have taken place Valentine's Day weekend. Organizers used the phrase running on by the 2022 because the 2021 was bypassed. Next year's UP200 is scheduled for the weekend of February 17th, 2022. Ontonagon County Sheriff's Dep Department Correctional Facility has a new inmate after a man attempted to flee police in a stolen vehicle this past Friday. An Ontonagon County Deputy Sheriff had seen the vehicle after it was reported to be recklessly driving and had left without paying at a local gas station. The deputy had tried to pull over the vehicle when it had fled at over 100 miles per hour. It was, it was discovered that the vehicle had been stolen from Wasu. Wisconsin last Thursday, the suspect lost control and fled the scene on foot, but was later located and charged with four charges of flee and elude a police officer, possession of a stolen motor vehicle, operating a motor vehicle under the influence, and larceny of gasoline. Details on who the suspect is will not be released until he is arranged in the 98th District Court. As of 1.35 p.m. Eastern Time today, US-41 was reopened after a tanker truck and pickup truck crashed this morning. Both drivers were said to have been taken to the hospital with unknown injuries and no more information on the crash has been released at this time. US-41 was closed for more than three hours but has since been cleared for tra traffic to resume. It took some time, but we finally saw a big blast of cold air here in the Midwest that changed the scenery. With ice shelves developing on our Great Lakes, Storm Alert meteorologist Lynette Grant explains one misstep can potentially leave you in a deadly situation. The beaches of Lake Michigan draw in hundreds of crowds all year long for different seasons and different reasons. But this season, it's all due to the ice. And while the ice may look really pretty, it's not the safest thing in the world. It is a natural wonder in wintertime on the Great Lakes. Large chunks of ice painting the shoreline. It takes several weeks or even months to develop because we need extended lengths of time with frigid temperatures. When the extreme cold hits us, they form the ice on the lake and then um, that all congregates at the edge of the uh, shore and creates the shelf. Lieutenant Fred Lesh has been with the Berrien County Sheriff's Office for 26 years, and every winter in the last quarter century, he has seen the wonders of the ice, but also the dangers it can cause. Shelf ice forms when small chunks of ice near the shore attach to the beach and continue to grow. The ice grows on the surface of the water and is not attached to the bottom of the lake. People get out there and they think that ice is very hard and they end up walking out too far and they slip and go through and then they don't realize that there is actually water underneath. While inland lakes develop enough ice to create less hazardous conditions, there is never a safe thickness of ice on Lake Michigan. My brother told me about the waves uh, about a week ago. They were more frozen, it got thawed out, but the waves were more clear before the snow came onto them. And we came out here just to see what they were like. Darren Brown is originally from Indianapolis, but now that he's back in Michigan, he wanted to see the ice for himself. He admitted that there is no clear distinction between the beach and the lake. You can't see the shore completely. You don't know where the, uh, the end of the line comes. You don't know if it's the sand or you're on the beach actually. 
If you do want to view the ice for yourself, officials tell me the safest way to do that is to just avoid where the water would meet the beach and just give yourself plenty of distance from the waves. Reporting in St. Joseph, I'm meteorologist Lynette Grant, WSBT 22 News. After this break, we'll be back with your national and international news. On American Experience. Marian Anderson challenged people's ideas of what the souls of black folk looked and sounded like. She is willing to show up because she is not going to accept racial oppression. She became the face of a movement. That was something she could never step back from. Voice of Freedom on American Experience. Tonight at 9 on WNMU TV. A snowstorm slammed the south this weekend as temperatures plunged into single digits and brought snow, sleet, and freezing rain in places as far south as San Antonio, Texas, spreading across the United States into the northeast. In Minnesota, they saw record-shattering temperatures as low as negative 38 degrees Fahrenheit and wind chills as low as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit in Kansas. Ice from the frigid blast knocked out power to for over 2 million people and halted the delivery of new COVID-19 vaccinations. An electric provider down in Houston, Texas, said power may not be restored to some homes until Tuesday. President Joe Biden declared an emergency in Texas to help assist with those response efforts, and state health officials in Texas said oh, about 400,000 vaccines that were expected to be delivered now won't be there, won't get there until next, at least Wednesday. The U.S. Senate voted Saturday to acquit former President Trump of inciting the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. But questions about the attack remain leaving some lawmakers calling for a more in-depth investigation. Skylar Henry has more details from Capitol Hill. Senators wrapped up the impeachment trial for former President Donald Trump over the weekend, with the 57 to 43 vote falling short of the two-thirds majority needed to convict. Donald John Trump, former President of the United States, is not guilty as charged in the article of impeachment. Now lawmakers are looking at a new way to investigate the January 6th assault on the Capitol. There's still more evidence that the American people need and deserve to hear, and a 9-11 commission is a way to make sure that we secure the Capitol going forward and that we lay bare the record of just how responsible and how abjectly a violating of his constitutional oath President Trump really was. The idea is gaining bipartisan support with even some of the president's staunchest allies calling for the commission. Did Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi know on January the 5th that there was a threat to the Capitol? What did President Trump do after the attack? And I want to make sure that uh, the Capitol footprint uh, can be better defended next time. Concern about a possible next time remains high. CBS News has obtained a DHS intelligence report saying domestic extremists will pose an increased threat to government workers and buildings throughout 2021. The report says many groups may feel emboldened by the success of the January 6th assault. And Congressman Joe Neguse, who was part of the House impeachment prosecution team, says that may have intensified after Mr. Trump's acquittal. Without accountability, uh, that many of these groups could very well become more emboldened and, uh, and perhaps uh, engage in, in more violence. Lawmakers have already tasked retired Lieutenant General Russell Honore to conduct a security review of the U.S. Capitol. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. A new photo from out of this world shows a spectacular view of Mars as an Arab country reaches the red planet's orbit for the first time. CBS's Tina Kraus reports from London. Celebrations broke out at Mission Control in Dubai as a spacecraft from the United Arab Emirates swung into orbit around Mars after a 300 million mile journey that took seven months. And this was a view worth waiting for. The probe named Hope captured an image 15,000 miles above the Martian surface. You can make out the largest volcano in the solar system. I'm truly looking forward to the scientific discoveries. The first ever Arab mission is designed to reveal the secrets of Martian weather, but the UAE also hopes to inspire young people. I truly hope this mission will impact an entire de generation to strive to things that are even bigger. Arriving at Mars is a huge leap for the Arab country. Until now, the nation has only sent satellites into orbit around Earth. To mark the historic mission, the UAE even gave visitors a Martian stamp in their passport. Hope will circle the red planet for the next two years. Tina Kraus, CBS News. After this break, we'll be back with your weather and sports.
I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. On this UTR, we head inside to explore Michigan's great indoors. We'll visit a zoo that's full of things that zoom, go inside to play ball, and see the right museum. Then it's a cool car collection that's also music to your ears and a place that literally rocks. This is an under the radar you just gotta see. Thursday night at 9.30 on WNMU TV. Welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm Megan Tarcia here with your weather and behind me is a very sunny and frigid NMU campus. Looking into today's conditions, it is currently partly cloudy with a temperature of 6 degrees. Our winds are north-northwest at 9 miles per hour and our barometric pressure is 30.50 inches and falling. Looking into tonight's conditions, it'll be mostly cloudy with a low of negative 1 degrees and our winds will be north-northwest at 11 miles per hour. Looking into tomorrow's conditions, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 16 degrees and our winds will be north-northwest at 13 miles per hour. Looking across the UP, starting in Sault Ste. Marie, it is 8 degrees and partly cloudy. Manistique is 11 and partly cloudy. Escanaba is 11 degrees and sunny. Down in Man Menominee, it is negative 4 and sunny. Over in Iron Mountain, it is 6 degrees and partly cloudy. Ironwood is 2 degrees and sunny. Up in Houghton, it is 5 degrees and cloudy. And here in beautiful Marquette, it is 6 degrees and partly cloudy. Looking ahead at our week's conditions, starting with Wednesday, it'll be a high of 22 degrees and a low of 8 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Thursday will be a high of 24 degrees and a low of 11 degrees, cloudy skies. And Friday will be a high of 23 degrees and a low of 7 degrees, and again, cloudy skies. Now going to Max with our sports. Thank you, Megan. Because of the ban on contact sports, high school student athletes have had to find other ways to stay active. When asked about mental health, Marquette Senior High School hockey captain Ansel Frost said, quote, kids need to play sports, even during a pandemic. And not just athletics, but, you know, band, music, and orchestra, and just getting kids together and playing what they love to do. I think it's really important, end quote. Hockey coach Doug Garrow said the lack of organized practices didn't stop his players from doing what they love either. He said, quote, when the weather got cold, they started going on outdoor ice rinks or frozen lakes, stuff like that. So they did a pretty good job of just trying to stay active, end quote. The Northern Michigan University hockey team opened their final true road series of the regular season with a 5-1 victory over the 17th-ranked Bemidji State Beavers Friday evening. In a very defensive first period, the Wildcats held the Beavers to just seven shots on net as both teams remained scoreless at the end of the first 20 minutes. The Wildcats played a large portion of the latter half of the period on the penalty kill as Rico DiMatteo turned aside shot after shot to keep his team up 1-0. The end of the second period, shots on goal were tied 14-14 as the Wildcats boasted another 11 shots blocked to help keep the Beavers out of their net. Holding a narrow 1-0 lead going into the third period, the Wildcats came out full speed ahead and refused to let up in the final frame, netting four goals in the final 20 minutes of action for the 5-1 final. And that's all we have for sports, but Megan, I hear you have another interesting story for us today. Yes, I do. In Nashville, North Carolina, a sheriff's office is allowing people to show their exes just how much they mean to them by turning them in if they have outstanding warrants. A post on the office's Facebook page offered a set of limited edition platinum silver bracelets, free transportation with a chauffeur, and a one-night minimum in their luxurious accommodations. Some found the post to be hilarious, while others found it to be offensive and poking fun at each other's, other people's freedom. Well, that's all, all the time. Oh, actually, we do have more time. Um. It was a nice series for our Wildcats this weekend. We finally, were, we won five of our last six games. The team is really starting to play a lot better now. So we uh, didn't get a chance to mention it, but we did also win on Saturday, too. Three to two in OT, Ben Newhouse, the that's game winner. very exciting, sadly. That's all the time we have today on Public Eye News. I'm Megan Tarcia. And I'm Max Stevens. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you all tomorrow. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, and studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.